Hi, my name is Megan. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm here today to share another Friday Sews video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I've been up to this week, the next projects on my plate, and my thoughts on sewing Halloween costumes for your kids. So I don't have too much to show you that you haven't already seen. This week, Pattern Emporium released the Meet You There dress and top, and I did post a review, um, so I'll make sure to include a link to that in the up there or in the below or, or whenever. If you haven't seen the video yet, go check it out. I made two versions, a dress and a top. Um, I have not finished my sew over at Neve skirt. Really, all I, I have two small things left to do, but I just haven't had the opportunity to sit down um, and do them yet. They've been lower on my priori priority list because I don't have anywhere to wear that skirt. And I think that's something that's sort of been front of mind for me as I plan my sewing projects for the next little while. So I do really enjoy testing. And when you test, it's kind of like whatever you're at the whim of the designer you're working with, whatever they want to do. Of course, there's never, at least with the designers that I work with, there's never any obligation to test a pattern if it's really not your speed um, or it's not your style or whatever. But I do you know, like to push my comfort zone a little bit. Um, but yeah, when I think about the rest of the garments that I make and what's in my plans and sort of looking back on the last year that I've been making content and producing videos, I had some plans videos earlier in the spring and then my summer plans, and I didn't achieve all of the plans that I had set out. And so I was thinking about, like, first of all, I, I bit off way more than I could chew. And secondly, when it came to actually sitting down to make the garment, I kind of started thinking like, am I really going to wear this? Is this something I need in my wardrobe right now? And so while I haven't yet settled on doing like a, a big project style audit of my wardrobe and my fa uh, fabric stash and my pattern stash and figuring out like what I need to make in a really systematic and um, strategic way, I am thinking about like, what gaps do I really need to fill versus Ooh, that looks like it'd be fun to sew. I think that for me, I need to hit a balance of both. So things that I, I need to sew, I need to make some pants. So I do have the duet trousers from Love Notions uh, ready to make up the muslin. I need to make some like workout pants, so some leggings. I have a couple different um, sort of like activewear bottoms patterns that I'm kind of hemming and hawing about, as well as some active knit, like stretch, four-way stretch activewear knit fabric to use to make some workout pants. I'm not going to venture into making a workout top or bra yet because I'm just I'm not quite there yet. But um, I do need some new pants and all of my like workout pants are boring black leggings that I picked up at Costco because that's where I like to buy my yoga pants. But I have some hot pink active knit, activewear knit fabric. I wish I could remember what the name of that fabric is. But I think you know what I mean. Um, some hot pink that I think would be really fun when I'm working out at home, a bit of a lift, if you will. The other thing that's on my list that I've spoken about before is another Arlington sweater with that cable knit, that mauve cable knit um, fabric. So I definitely want to get that done in the next couple weeks because it is starting to cool down here. In fact, it was supposed to snow last night. We were supposed to get a good snowfall and we didn't. Um, as I was walking my kiddo home from school, I dropped her off and I was walking back um, to start my work day. It was starting to snow, but it hasn't uh, like accumulated on the ground yet. So anyway, but it's coming. Winter is coming. Um, so I got tons of great feedback about how to consider finishing the hem of that sweater. So um, again, I'm just sort of working through what exactly I'm going to do, what my next plans are. And then I want to make a French Terry Mariner top from Liesl & Co. Um, I'm outside of the size range in the hip for that. So I have had to adjust the pattern a little bit. So I did add on an extra size to accommodate my hip, um, but I want to compare the flat pattern with the flat pattern that I know fits me well, just to make sure that, you know, the ease is what I'm expecting it to be because I also, I'm gonna be a bit on the rogue side and not muslin that pattern. I just wanna cut straight into my French Terry because ultimately if it doesn't really work out, it can just be pajamas. So that's sort of the next few projects on my list. I really do want to make, um, I had shown off some chiffon, some beautiful vibrant floral chiffon at the end of the summer to make a duster style cardigan. And I also want to make that. So I've got a couple that I think will be fun. Um, a few different like basics and some fun projects to sew. And then thinking about 
where do I want to develop my skills and what do I want to learn next is kind of where my mindset is right now. Um, so Halloween costumes. So this morning I got up at 530, which is about an hour earlier than I typically get out of bed and get rolling so that we could get, I could get the kiddos dressed, fed, dressed and in their Halloween costumes before they needed to go where they went for the day. So it is Friday. Today is a school day and a daycare day. So my kids wear their costumes to school and daycare. Uh, and they did not wear the costumes that they had picked out a couple weeks ago when we went shopping for Halloween costumes. And that is why I don't put the time and effort into sewing costumes for my kids. Um, my mother made our Halloween costumes and she made beautiful Halloween costumes. I'll include some photos, but I actually have them here with me. So my mom made this Little Mermaid costume for me um, in... So I'm going to guess that it was 1990, 1991-ish. The Little Mermaid was the very first movie that I saw in the theaters. And uh, this <laughs> costume she made, and I, I wish that I still had the pattern because it was probably a Simplicity or McCall's pattern. Um, but this costume is like 30 years old now. Um, and it, I had my daughter put it on and she's um, taller and leaner than I was as a child, um, but you know, so she's a bit, uh, it doesn't fit her quite as well as it fit me. However, I probably also had a snowsuit on underneath this. But anyway, it's actually made from fleece. The top is fleece. And then the, the tail is like a long skirt. And I know I wore snow pants underneath it because I grew up in Saskatchewan. And as cold as it can be here in Calgary for Halloween, um, I haven't had a Halloween in Calgary where it was like minus 25 and snowy. And we for sure had those when I was growing up. So the year that I was a Little Mermaid, my brother was a Ninja Turtle, and I also have that costume, but I didn't pull it out. So that one is super special to me. My mom also made, um, at one point, three Mickey Mouse costumes. So Mickey, Minnie, and then she was also Mickey. Um, my mom was a kindergarten grade one teacher, and so um, her costumes were always fabulous. Like, she always had something fun, but she made these these hats. <laughs> I think this is one of the kids ones. There were two adult ones, or one adult one and two kids ones. Um, but yeah, isn't that cute? Like, it's not going to fit me, and it's probably ruined my hair. But it's made out of foam, and again, this thing is more than 30 years old, so it has held up. Fun fur, it's lined uh, in cotton, like in a jersey. She did a marvelous job with these, and I know we wore them, and my cousins wore them, and other friends' kids wore them, um, and they're still in great shape. And then there was a little, this is the little Minnie Mouse dress that mom made for me. Um, and I'm guessing I was five when I wore this, but I'm not totally sure. Um, but yeah, I, I have photos of my brother and I in these two sets of costumes, so they will have been up on the screen already. Uh, as I've mentioned before, my mom passed away five years ago, and so the fact that I have these costumes now in my possession is really super special to me. Um, so I think if you are going to make your kids costumes and that is important to you, I think that you are amazing. I also think you're amazing if you buy um, the costume the day before Halloween or you like throw your kid in whatever and, and let them go wild for it. It's supposed to be fun. Um, I know myself and I am a people pleaser. And one of the things that's important to me as I raise my children is that I don't want them to be as tied up in making other people happy before they make themselves happy or to make other people feel safe before they themselves feel safe. And there were lots of times in my life that I can think of where um, I did something because somebody else wanted me to do it, but I really didn't want to. And uh, my daughter is exceptionally strong-willed. And from the age of three, she has stopped wearing what I want her to wear. So I had visions when I had my, I was holding my little baby girl when she was first born. And I thought, oh my God, I have so many wonderful years of like beautiful Christmas dresses ahead of me. And I got three years of beautiful Christmas dresses. And now she is not having it. And that's fine because you know what? It's more important that she's comfortable and she likes what she's wearing and how she looks than it is that I like how she looks. And that has been a, a hard pill for me to swallow, I will be honest. Um, but you know what? That it is what's important is that she's happy with how she looks. And that extends to her Halloween costume. And I knew she was going to change her mind this morning. I knew it. I could tell 
Three weeks ago, I could have called this that she was going to change her mind and wear a different costume, and she sure did. And I didn't, I didn't have to worry about that, like, feeling like there was guilt or any additional emotions or anything. I just was like, okay, you can wear that instead. And off we went, and everyone was happy, and it was a smooth morning, which was good because I have a heck of a work day ahead of me. Uh, same with my little guy. So he's now three. He decided he wanted to be the um, robot knight who saves the green baby, which meant the Mandalorian from the TV show The Mandalorian in the Star Wars universe. And the green baby is what he calls Baby Yoda. Uh, so we went to the costume store. They didn't have any Mandalorian costumes, but he saw a Stormtrooper costume and decided that was close enough. This morning I took it out to put it on him and he said, it's too big, I don't like it. I want to wear my vampire costume. So he wore last year's vampire costume. He is a fluffy little vampire, so we had to, <laughs> like it's a size two and he wears more like a four. So we had to sort of shoehorn it on him over several layers, but he got it on thanks to the wonder of Velcro. And he was happy and I was happy and my husband was slightly dismayed watching this interaction go down. But ultimately like, we're pretty nerdy, so Logan is going to wear his storm to <laughs> Logan is going to wear his stormtrooper costume many, many, many times in the coming years, uh, more than he would wear dress pants and a dress shirt. I can guarantee that as well. So anyway, I, I would love I'd love to hear your comments. What is the most memorable Halloween costume you've ever had? Did you make it? Did someone make it for you? Do you like making costumes? Um, I think that getting involved in cosplay, like my family often goes to Comic Expo or Comic Con here in Calgary. Um, and I have been threatening to like get a family cosplay costume situation going on and and everybody here, no one has yet agreed with me. Um, so I'm holding on to that. But someday my kids will be teenagers and maybe they'll buy in. But do you do that? Is that your passion? Costume making is the gateway for a lot of people to garment sewing. So I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's have a conversation about it below. Um, I hope that you have a spooky and safe Halloween. We will be going trick-or-treating. Because we live in an apartment building, we don't get any trick-or-treaters. So um, I might go hand out some candy to the people who live around here, um, masked up and sanitized and stuff. And and uh, just say hi to my neighbors. And maybe they wanna see my, who knows what costumes my kids are gonna wear on Sunday. Like, it's a great mystery. We have a costume box. Maybe they'll even wear these ones. So at any rate, I hope you have a great day and I will see you again soon.